Let's see from the kitchen, sun just coming up. Welcome to Fun Friday. It's been another week. We have crazy puppies here. Apparently today is a very exciting day. Someone's in the nesting box. Gonna be a creeper. Take a little peeker and see who it is. Hope you guys are doing great. We are going to take a look at my Mata Mata today and some other little creatures. Quick update, my I Am Samani, Silky, and my Moran's chicks are at day 14. Everybody's looking good. And these two little beggars just can't get enough. I would say 25% of my Silkies were fertile and 80 to 90% of the si uh, Samanis and Moran's are growing, so that's good. Okay, exciting development. This is something I've never seen before. All right, here's my eco tip. When you buy things from the grocery store, buy what you can in glass jars, and then instead of recycling, putting them in the recycling bin, wash them. They can be used for all kinds of stuff. And there she goes, doing it again. Alrighty, we're gonna do a quick unboxing. I received this beautiful gift from Celtic Balls. The whole flock is on top of the roof. We've got a little traffic jam in this nesting box down here. They are a uh, ball python company. So I'm trying to do this one by myself. Next week we should have like chicks hatching pretty soon. Daphne has not gone into labor yet. You guys will get to see her. She is massive. They're trying to act discreet and pretend that they're not begging and hoping for scraps. Good morning. You guys chowing down? What's for breakfast? They can be used, and of course you can reuse your plastic containers as well, but I like glass because it lasts forever. You can use it for flowers, storing vitamins. Anything you can think to store can be stored really well in those glass jars. And most of them have really nice lids that you can keep as well. I can't see, it's too dark. One of the Jersey Giants. Pugsley, looking for a snack. Look at these majestic dragons. Aren't they awesome? Look at my little baby dragons. They're getting so big. Look at that perfect tail. Here's a quick peek at part of my reference library. Yes, got a laptop bag up there. Alrighty. So um, in these shelves here, I have about 700 reference books and magazines and catalogs just goes on and on and part of my library I left in pretty amazing so I brought her out into the yard and she immediately starts engaging in behavior in order to protect herself the gender of my mata mata also you can see from the shell and they sent me a little thank you for being interviewed on their show, so let's take a look. Okay, here it is, a card with a 2023 calendar, which I really needed. Okay, that's cute, like Happy New Year's. What's going on? I'm trying to give you the aerial view of Daphne from above. She is getting huge, and it's really funny because she still comes running for breakfast and she's massive. <laughs> honey, honey, I'm so sorry. You're so oh, my baby. They're like an ambush predator. They open up their mouth and suck water in really fast. This young lady here is Moirin, my African pygmy hedgehog. Here are the mungs just chomping away. Alora and Willow. Of course, Dandy likes Dandelion likes to go in there and eat snacks with them. Who is? And all the fish and water goes in at once. The nasty weather has passed, and it is a beautiful morning. Kamina got out of bed early. She's looking for her breakfast. 
I was just going to show you guys a few of my little trinkets on my writing desk while I read you one of my favorite poems by Caitlin Seal. Definitely be commenting and let me know if there are specific things you guys want updates on. Let's get to it. Okay, here is my eco tip and lesson today. I had talked to you guys last week about reusing kitchen scraps. So I had some avocados. I used the avocado. I saved the seed. And it's very strange and very weird and very awesome. So this is, uh, they grow to be very large and they live for 30 to 35 years. Because she knows out here in the wild, rather than in her safe little enclosure, she may definitely encounter a predator. Isn't that smart? A lot of people have had trouble with their laying birds and people are figuring out that not only has the producer's pride food from tractor supply been compromised with an inferior quality, the company has admitted that they outsource to another brand in order to meet demand. Sometimes we have little thieves that come in Yes, these are the pools that froze and broke, so now we're using them as feeders. Miriam is here, and she is getting into my hair. Go on. Okay. Very cute. I love these. Okay. Not sure what May has to do with law enforcement, but maybe it's like law enforcement appreciation month or something. Yes. Bendigo is still in bed. He's ready to get up and play. To grow your own little avo forest, which I have here, you can see, you save the seed and then you either peel that uh, brown skin off of the pip or you let it dry out like this. And then you can just like, just sort of squeeze it and break this peel off of there. It's called, Do Not Fall In Love With People Like Me. Do not fall in love with people like me. People like me will love you so hard that you turn into stone, into a statue where people come to marvel. Oh good, we've got water. The lines have been frozen. It's 28 degrees out, everybody shivering. Daphne's still pregnant. Well, good morning. Oh, straight in to get some food, huh? They like to get into the food bag if I don't get up and feed them in time. At how long it must have taken to carve that far away look in your eyes. Do not fall in love with people like me. We will take you to museums and parks and monuments and kiss you in every beautiful place so that you never can go back to them without tasting us like blood in your mouth. She is also albino as well. Look how gentle and sweet Cairo is with everyone. August, back to school. September is football season, I get it. So beautiful, lovely calendar. If you uh, are, have any interest in ball pythons whatsoever, definitely check out Celtic Balls. My favorite thing about them is that they do a weekly show supporting women. So then you have your little pip, and usually they look kind of a cream white color. This one's brown, they do vary. Let me show you the next step. I thought I told you guys this last week, but the mungs are a heritage breed and there are not very many of them in the US. So I'm very, very excited to have this breed and I cannot wait for Alora to start laying because I will be selling hatching eggs to those of you that want to try and reproduce your own mungs. Let's talk chicken math. I don't know how many of you are readers and writers or mathematicians out there, but chicken math is not like algebra or, or any other math you've ever heard of. The way it goes is, oh, look at that. Somebody wants back in bed. Are you trying to get back in your bag? I'll come help you. All right, chicken math works like this. Come springtime, you see how expensive eggs are getting. Oh, look at that. Somebody's healthy, making a little poo. And you decide, you know, maybe I could just get a couple of laying hens myself. There's Betty having a snack. And you think, hmm, three hens ought to do it. You get your three hens. 
So then uh, you're, you're raising your three hens and you just fall in love with them more and more. And so you get on chicken groups online and you start learning about all the different cool breeds. And you see that they're black fibromelanistic chickens and you see that there are huge breeds and tiny breeds and fluffy breeds and crested breeds and all this crazy stuff. Basically you decide, well, I just need a few of these and a few of those. And then you have uh, don't have enough roosters, so you need to you go ahead and order a straight run. And then you end up with more roosters than you have hens. And so then you need hens for your roosters. And then you find out about frizzle. And then you find out about other birds. Look at those majestic birds. So then you start thinking, maybe I should do ducks. Maybe I should do goats. Maybe I should get turkeys and quail and pheasants and every other cool thing in the world. And pretty soon, your three little chicks have turned into a crazy barnyard of critters. Cairo, you don't need to help. Thank you. So that was my beautiful Mata Mata. <laughs> but it is quite pokey, and some people are very sensitive. What you do is get a damp paper towel, or uh, you can use a little tea towel. You get your damp towel, and you just wrap up your little pip in here. And if I have a bunch of avocados at a time, I will do a few in a paper towel. And then you're gonna put this dude in a baggie and then I put it in the pantry. So you wanna put it in a room temperature, dark area. Yes, the water birds absolutely love it when <laughs> there's water on the ground. Drop some stickers. Ooh, I love stickers. So that, those are very nice. So I'm gonna add these to my sticker board. Heart, heart to heart, thanks. How cute, I love this. And I love cute stuff. Oh, a handwritten note. So that's, that's fun for them. And also it was frozen, so. Everybody's thirsty. There's Peggy, my Beelfielder, getting her a rooster, a Beelfielder rooster. Here are the mons, Alora and Willow. Oh, aren't they gorgeous? So there is, uh, this is the little uh, nursery feeder I was using. So this little trough is inside this cage so the smaller birds can get in there, but the adult birds can't. Of course, the peafowl just fly wherever they want and they do get into that chick feeder, but um, that's why I have eight different feeders throughout the park. So everybody can eat throughout the day. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Drop your questions and comments below. And I'll see you guys soon.